Hello Internet! Welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. We've been clearing the lab. Last episode we talked about the auto dock. Not feeling too good about that episode. We're just going to be moving moving on here. I did want to say, uh, we'll talk about it when we get to a new turret, um, but somebody pointed out to me, apparently there's been a change to the way turrets work. We are hearing things to our south. Probably a blob room. What am I hearing? Oh, zombie scientist, and you know how to open doors. Good for you. Uh, I'm just going to shoot you because I have a gun in my hands. Yes, I see the scientist. Thank you. Someone told me... Oh, come on, man. There you go. Uh, someone told me that turrets now, if you flash your flashlight, they will you will remain lit up for several seconds. So we just turned off our flashlight. That takes no time to toggle the flashlight, I believe. Uh, one It's 1406.27. 140627. Yeah, not advancing time. However, when you turn off the flashlight, you remain lit up for a turn. In fact, we can see that our vision radius is currently in the light blind section. So if I wait a turn, uh, okay, you'll see that it expanded, revealing that we're no longer light blind from having the light. So what is happening is that when we activate and turn off the flashlight, we are still lit up for a turn, apparently several moments there. Um, and that is what is leading to the turrets detecting us when we walk into a dark room and they can see us. That is what someone pointed out to me in the comments. Really should have checked this room for a turret, although it would have shot the zombie scientist. You just really should be careful when you do things like that. Um, so that may very well be the reason for why we are being detected by turrets and shot in the when we're in dark tiles. So that is something to be aware of moving forward. And I wanted to share that with you because that's obviously something of concern. So let's check this room. Uh, let's wait for a sound pop up. Heard footsteps from here. So they're footsteps and they seem to be centered in the room to our south. So a zombie, um, not a robot. Oh, or spiders. Yep, close that. Don't really want to deal with spiders. So I don't think we've seen spiders in this playthrough up until this point. Spiders are, one, they're giant spiders. They're not little itty bitty spiders that you would deal with in your daily life. Although if you live in Australia uh, or like Vietnam, I'm sure you're dealing with plenty of enormous spiders. But in Cataclysm, the spiders are enormous. I don't know what their actual official size is. In my head, they are the size of dogs or larger. Um, so pretty pretty hefty in my, in my mind. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's how I interpret it. And um, yeah, they, uh, the main thing with spiders is that they're very good at dodging. So if you try to take them on in melee, you will often never really be able to hit them. They will frequently dodge you. And that can be, oh, just so obnoxious. Um, and if you're shooting them, it's a lot easier. Um, they're, they're pretty easily shot, in my opinion. Um, so I often will not engage them until it's such a time that I have a rifle. If you're in a lit up, and can find area like this, it can be problematic because they often spawn in large numbers. If you see them in a basement, a lot of times you will have like this amount of space. So you can kind of get eyes on them, even if they're in like the darker areas. You know, uh, usually by this stage of the game, I usually have picked up light amp goggles by now. I'm surprised we haven't seen any. Um, but you will be able to shoot them from further away and it'll be less scary. But if you go in with melee, they will rip you up the main reason to kill spiders is that they also give chitin, so that's something that you can, uh, if you're looking for chitin armor and whatnot, you can pretty easily kill spiders for chitin. They, of course, give mutant meat as well, which is not something we're interested in. Let's dissect this zombie scientist. Can't see. Turn on the flashlight and dissect the zombie scientist. This will take a long time. Ignore. <sighs> yeah, not happy about that, uh... Autodoc episode. I'm never happy. Have you noticed this? Of course you have. You've been watching the episodes. You hear me complain constantly about not feeling like oh, literally to our south is the other Autodoc variant we were discussing. So probably not a turret in this room, but still going to be careful. Uh, and then we will talk about this layout as we go. Uh, here, I was once a man. A man from the south you hear. Uh, and we will talk about this room here in a moment. Did not mean to step that way. Let's go ahead and peek. And uh, looks like we are clear. Yeah, okay. So in the last episode, we discussed autodocs and why they are valuable. 
let's talk about this particular room. We saw the auto dock up here just as a side portion in this little like, I, I view this as like a medical wing where maybe um, they come like you get sick or you're, you're being tested or whatever, um, but you're not violent. So they kind of keep you in these little rooms just to give you some semblance of normalcy while they observe you essentially is how I interpret this. I don't know that that is the lore behind it, but that's how I view these rooms. Um, these are not super common. You will come across usually in a lab, just a couple of these particular layout rooms. Um, they don't always have an auto dock as far as I know, unless that was changed because previously you would only find beds. Um, although this room is noticeably larger than the others, so it's possible it is a guaranteed spawn, but that's a place to find an auto dock. However, not super valuable, right? It's just an auto dock. There's not really CBMs or anything else of value. This particular layout is much better in my opinion. Now it is locked. And so it requires some effort to get in here. Um, whereas the one to our north is just open and usable. However, this room comes with a few benefits. Number one, this little area over here can have stuff. Um, it looks like all we got out of this was potassium iodide. I believe CBMs can spawn in these lockers, so you might as well check them. Then in the room itself, there are four shelves. Now these shelves, let's turn on a light. These shelves can contain various things. The main thing you're looking for, CBMs. They will often contain fully clean, sterilized, ready to go CBMs. This one is just the internal chronometer, which is not good. We already have this. Um, and it's just the one that functions as a watch. It's pretty rare that I find CBMs in here that I want, but if you don't have any CBMs and you're looking to pick things up, you will often find them in here. Now, additionally, you will often find antiseptic, additional anesthesia, all kinds of stuff in this room that are of different levels of value. Then there's the auto dock itself, of course. And then down here is really what you're looking for in this room, which it's not locked. We can go right in here and take this is an anesthesia kit. Now this, as far as I know, is a guaranteed spawn. And we discussed in our last episode that an anesthesia kit with the 3000 charges, it's three liters, which is just a ridiculous amount of anesthesia uh, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, it's 3000 milliliters of anesthesia and can be used for essentially, I don't know, 12 to 15 installations. It really depends on the CBM, of course, uh, because they have varying um, surgery lengths. But you can use this for quite a lot of CBM installations. So this is very important. Grab that. Every time you find one of these rooms, this is never locked. You can just pop in here and grab the anesthesia kit, which I would encourage you to do every time. Now, the room actually attached to the auto dock is locked. And there's two ways we can get in there. Number one, well, three ways. One, we can hack this computer. Um, this requires a skill check. And you can see it says access denied. We would need to hack it. We're not going to do that because my computer skill sucks. Number two, you can pickaxe through the glass. I would recommend going through the glass because it's um, it's easier to pickaxe through than the wall. The wall will leave behind rebar and then a pit that you have to cover. Um, so you have to smash the rebar cage and fill the pit. If you go through the glass, it is just the glass. Um, and if you go through the door, it's just not, nothing is left behind. So either go through the door or the glass here. Um, I would not recommend going through the walls. And then the third way we can open this is actually back here, there are cells filled with cyborgs, um, generally cyborgs. I think it's, there's two variants of cyborgs. Is there another one? Yeah, here we have the, uh, what are you? Broken cyborg, uh, prototype cyborg. Yeah, so these are broken. Uh, and then this one is a prototype. Um, generally, cyborgs are not super dangerous. Uh, they do have some armor. They can be a little difficult in melee. Um, especially if you're early game, although by the time you're clearing a lab, you're usually geared enough to handle it. And you'll see there's another computer back here. This one is not locked. We can actually just do this anytime that we want. And what this will do is unlock all of the doors. So it will unlock all the cell doors as well as the door to the auto dock. So if you really are desperate to get in here, you don't have a pickaxe, you don't have hacking skill, you can just turn this on pop all the doors, kill the enemies, and go into the auto dock. Cyborgs in general, as far as I know, never give valuable CBMs, so they're almost never worth the time it would take to kill them. Um, but I will say that these cells don't always spawn populated. Sometimes you will come in here and only two of the cells will have enemies in them. So, you know, it's a, it's a question of value. It's a question of whether or not it's worth the time and the bullets and whatever that you would lose killing the enemies 
to get free access to the auto dock. Now for me, it's almost never worth it because by the time I'm in the lab, I have a pickaxe. We are dealing with some issues with our, our pickaxe though. So yeah, maybe maybe we would want to open that. Okay, another, another locked room that could have value. What is this? This is a prisoner containment. We discussed prisoner containment previously as being not that valuable. Let's stand around here for a minute. This unit is broken. Please call an attendant. Uh, so we are not hearing any sounds inside this prisoner containment. Remember, there's only really two valuable things in prisoner containment. Number one is the scientist zombies that spawn here. Um, and then there's a little medical closet in the back corner. You can find CBMs occasionally on the shelves and whatnot. But for the most part, if I don't hear zombies, I will not crack these open. Because the only reason I usually go in these is to kill the zombie scientists and possibly get CBMs. So really no reason for us to crack that open. In the southeast, you hear clang. Actually, clang implies that there is something in there because there's no furniture in these rooms. And clang is generally a sound that is made when something smashes furniture. So that leads me to believe there is at least one zombie in here. So I do think we'll go up and get our, our uh, jackhammer, although not super thrilled about that. We're still dealing a lot of with issues uh, relating to our jackhammer. I should have marked what stairs I came down. Let's uh, see if we can suss this out. Uh, we're looking for an upstairs that's kind of probably here is where we came in. Uh, definitely want to mark that and definitely don't remember where the turrets were. Uh, definitely don't open doors like that. So we're going to be a little cautious as we move through. Now, generally, if I open a door and there's a turret in there, I will close the door again to kind of mark. But you really, really should remember when you try to backtrack uh, where you came and what is safe. Uh, so in general, looks like we shot around here, which is interesting. Or maybe just the casing. No, we definitely shot. What were we shooting, I wonder? Interesting. Uh, just going to be careful. Like I said, another casing? No. Uh, maybe those... Ooh, okay. I was going to say, maybe... The casings aren't our casings, but here is a turret. Well, if we're heading back upstairs, let's grab the turret and see if we can uh, take that apart upstairs to get a solar uh, a, a battery like we discussed previously, a storage battery. Where am I going? To the north here. Uh, yeah, so it's just presuming this is where we came down. Let's peek up the stairs to be extra cautious. Um... I don't know if this is where we came down. Yeah, because... No, no, go upstairs, please. Um, yeah, because we wanted to pick one that's close to the, the other upstairs. So let's mark this. No, we'll mark it when we go back down. So we got to keep an eye, eye on our stamina because we're overburdened and we don't want to exhaust ourselves to the point of getting winded, which is really bad. Uh, go ahead and turn that flashlight off, dummy. You're wasting battery charge. I will say that the battery draw was reworked for a lot of things uh, a while ago. So things like flashlights actually have a very, very long um, usage time. So we could use this for several hours uninterrupted without burning through our battery. Plus we have a ton of light batteries, so it's not super concerning. The only issue would be if it went out while we were exploring, that would be a little frustrating. So she just dropped the anesthesia kit. We don't need that. Don't need the extra scalpel. Antiseptic, codeine, etc. Are we in pain? We're not. Mouse serum. I believe that's the second mouse serum that we found. We'll hang on to the turret. Drop the turret out here. Let's uh, eat something. We have some cracklins. Why don't we see if we can find an animal to kill. Maybe get some proper meat in our belly. What is that? chunk of mutant meat what did i oh the wasps yes i remember um we're just looking for any kind of animal get that heartbeat sound out of here i hate that um i actually use this sound pack specifically for that heartbeat sound because it's very loud and obnoxious which means i'm guaranteed to hear it other um sound packs have like the darth vader breathing sound which i had a hard time hearing um, and by far the number one indicator for me that I'm out of stamina is that sound. So I really like the heartbeat for that purpose, but it is extremely obnoxious. 
Not seeing any animals, unfortunately. The forest is generally not the best place to go. For animals, we would be looking for something more like one of these vaguely open tiles. This allows you to see very far, which means that even if there's a pack of dogs or birds or something in the distance, you can f see where they are and work towards that. So it doesn't look like we're really finding anything. Let's just head back and we'll just eat some of our... Oh, I saw a pop-up of something on our on our compass there, but I lost it. So that's unfortunate. Okay, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Head back and we'll just eat something out of our stores, which is perfectly fine. Uh, bacon, cereal, pumpkin. Uh, I think we're getting to be... Oh, we're normal weight. Oh, there was height and age added to the game. Interesting. I did not notice that, I don't think, up until now. So that's cool. We obviously did not set this um, when we started our character. It didn't exist, so it looks like it defaulted us to 5, 9, and 25, which uh, I'm like 6, 1, and 32. So I'm not thrilled about that, but whatever. It's fine. It's fine. Let's, um... 5'9". I guess that's still pretty tall. I don't know. What's normal height for people? I think the average global height is like 5'7 for a guy or something like that. I don't know. Men in my area are very tall. What am I looking for? I'm looking for MREs. I was going to get an MRE. So we'll just grab beef taco. Sounds delicious. I like tacos. Let's um, take them apart. I only eat soft shell tacos because I do not like hard shell tacos. Uh, take everything apart here and we'll just eat what we want. Beef taco entree, delish, cookie, cracker, chocolate bar, candy, dehydrated fruit, eat the multivitamin, eat the water purific. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so we'll drag this stuff up here. We don't really want most of this. Great. Um, so that was something good. Need a cracklin as well. For extra calories, then we'll eat some pumpkin until we're full. Go ahead and drop, no, pick up the soldering iron. Boop. And we will take apart the turret, see if we can get a battery out of this one. Also quite damaged from us shooting it, I assume. So the likelihood of us getting all the materials is virtually just not going to happen. Uh, but we get some stuff. Still, no. Oh, we did get a storage battery. Okay, so a small storage battery has the same battery capacity as a car battery. However, we can combine storage batteries. Go into our crafting menu. Do we have these recipes? We do not. So I believe you can combine multiple small storage batteries. No, you take these apart, right? You cannot butcher. Can I... I think you take them apart and then you rebuild them as bigger ones or maybe that's solar panels. I guess I don't remember. Whatever, small storage battery, we can throw that in a car. You know, we're not doing anything else right now. Just exploring the lab. We needed the, oh, that's right. We needed the jackhammer. So we should have been charging this the whole time while we were wandering in the woods and whatnot. Let's go ahead and turn on the recharger. How are we doing battery charge wise? 90-ish percent. Yeah, okay. Let's see if we can install this storage battery. Pick a place where there's no battery already installed. Install, small storage battery, done. And now we have an extra battery. Oh, 500. Oh, geez, I'm so dumb. No, it's one-fifth of the storage of a regular car battery. I was thinking of a medium battery, not a car battery. That's my bad. So a small storage battery is actually pretty garbage for us. How do you, you definitely can make bigger ones. We, we probably just don't have the books with us to make, make a larger one. Um, and that didn't take any time at all. So this did not charge. Let's, um, do we have any books? We could read a book. We have a first aid book, don't we? Oh, that's right. We didn't bring, oh, we did bring. Okay. Read this one. Yeah. Because both installing CBMs and getting them out of corpses, I believe functions using first aid. So let's just kill a little time while we charge our battery. Oh, lots of vehicle sounds. Uh, really, as long as we don't run out of gas. It's passing five minutes at a time. Yeah, we'll wait another like 30 minutes. 72%. And next percent, there we go, 76%. Our focus is not that bad, but we're not really gaining skill very quickly. That's enough to get into the prisoner containment. So we'll go ahead and grab this. Shut off the old engine. Nope. Shut off 
my shift key is sticking. So like sometimes I'm trying to shift hit a, a, a number key and it actually just um, moves us in that direction by accident. So that's not great because that will get us murdered by a turret at some point. But for now, let's head back down here. Crack open this prisoner containment. Maybe get some CBMs out of the old scientist zombies that might be in there. Really hoping that we were actually hearing a scientist zombie. So let's mark this up. Um, main stairs. This way we know that if we you know come back a week from now and we don't know where to go up, we've marked it as main stairs. So we know that that is the direction to go. <sighs> Disappointed the storage battery was not larger, but it is just a turret. It's not like a... Uh, you know, a, a huge vehicle that needs a ton of battery charge. It's something simple like a a turret. It's kind of like, you know, if you had a, um, I don't know, like a, a laptop, right? A laptop is not going to need the storage capacity of something like a, you know, vehicle or uh, a larger drone or something. Have you seen my children? No, I have not, madam. Let's go ahead and jackhammer through the door here again i don't know if we talked about this anytime you jackhammer something there's a chance that you will have the roof collapse in general this is survivable but i i would not recommend doing it at low health um and there's no way to know whether something will cause a collapse it really is just a random roll at the time it's deconstructed so should be hopefully scientists in here hello scientist going to murder you quickly Oh, you're more resilient than the last one. Good for you. And in a previous episode... Oh, see, that's actually a little scary. So in a previous episode, we said that this was not breakable by a brute. I said that the only way to get through these um, without pickaxing or whatever was to let a brute punch you through the wall or a tank punch you through the glass. Because if they hit you, you fly back until you hit a wall or something. But if there's a uh, glass there, it will actually break the glass and let you through. This has been changed, apparently, um, because previously these guys could not do it. But in our explosive test, they actually were able to break through the glass. So be aware of that, because that's super important to know. We're going to chill and see if he breaks through there. User password unrecognized. Uh, he doesn't seem interested in breaking through. I've also been told recently that you can now shoot through reinforced glass. Let's try that. Oh, if we can see an enemy here. Hello, child. So let's try shooting through here. Someone said you can shoot through these now, which you definitely could not before. Yeah, totally can. It reflected off the zombie child's thick hide. So what we could do is wait for him to bash through here and see if we could, uh, see if we could kill that brute. He doesn't seem interested in coming out to play with us though. Um, but I will not dissect this corpse while he is there because the last thing we want is to get locked into 45 minutes of dissecting and have him come creeping up behind us. So let's just loot the area first. Inhaler, no. Drowsy cough syrup, ah, uh, yeah, we should probably take that. Check the desks, glasses, there's the brute. Hello, brute. Uh, I am brute. I will go ahead and check all the desks and things. Really nothing we want here. Check this area as well. Used to be that CBMs could spawn over here. I'm not really seeing them in a while though. So I don't know if that's still true. Got ourselves a grappler in here. Oh, a grabber. Oh, hiccup, excuse me. A grabber zombie instead. Um, yeah, not seeming like he's gonna break the glass. Even though that seems unlikely. Heard whack, ignore. You hear whack, you hear whack, you hear whack. Okay, so it sounds like he's bashing the door now. Yeah, my shift key. What is going on with... No, I don't want sticky keys. Thank you, though. Um, let's stop dragging and check if he broke out. He did not. It sounds like he's smashing stuff, though. Makes me nervous. Let's, um, instead of hauling all this crap, let's just move the corpse. So let's get... Ignore. Ignore constantly, huh? Okay. Get rid of all this. Jeez, come... Oh, I screwed everything up. Screwing everything up, internet. I'm so bad. Ignore. Check on him again. Still has not made it through. Give me the joint and the cash card, and then we will haul the corpse. Um, this is also useful if you don't have... Ignore. Oh, now I have to move this crap again. 
Just do it one instead of all of them. There you go. Uh, if you don't have a flashlight, this is something we didn't discuss. If you don't have a flashlight and you need to do butchering or something in the lab, um, one, again, I would recommend not doing anything in the lab if you don't have a flashlight because of the danger. Oh, nope, that's the spider room. Don't go in there. Uh, because of the danger that the lab presents, there's definitely a turret right here that we couldn't do anything about. Um, uh, don't do anything in the lab if you don't have a light in general. But if you don't have a light and you need to butcher or you're concerned about your battery charge, just drag the corpse to wherever you saw lights. Now, lights uh, are not uncommon in the lab. We've mostly been smashing them, so I don't think that we're really going to find any. Um, but we have the flashlight, so I'm okay just turning this on and butchering. Dissect. Probably not going to get anything, and if we do, it probably won't be very good. The scientists can have good... Stop hauling, please. Can have good bionics on them. They have a science bionic uh, item group. So like you can find some stuff on them, but for the most part, um, at our current skill level, we're just gonna get burnout bionics. So again, prisoner containment, not super valuable. Only thing I generally go for is the scientist zombies. So let's just head to the north here. We haven't been up here yet. Okay, hemostatic powder, powder? autoclave pouch. So this is the second batch we found. Again, you find them in such large quantities. Really a second open, Wait a minute, this is not a barracks, this is prisoner containment. Um, yeah, that's not a barracks. What, uh, is this prisoner containment? Interesting, this is the second open layout we've seen where there are corpses and an open door. This leads me to believe that there's probably something pretty dangerous in here. Last time it was the robots. You don't have anything, you don't have anything. So let's be careful here. There's another brute. I'm not scared of the brute. I'm concerned. Usually when there's an open layout, there's something big and scary inside. Like a mole rat or a freaking robot. So I'm a little concerned about that. You're not uh, breaking that glass. I don't know what's going on with that. Let's try shooting him through it. Get nice and high. Yeah, he can shoot right through it. Uh, he doesn't take a lot of damage. The Brutes do have more armor than most of the zombies we've been seeing. I kind of get the feeling that shooting through the glass is reducing our damage as well because I really would expect to see more than 9 or 10 damage on this. Um, but we'll kill him on the off chance. Yeah, it's real slow going. Use the quick aim. Not doing great here. Definitely tedious, but uh, on the off chance that he can get out of there and cause us problems, we want to kill him. Man, we're not, we're barely dealing any damage to him. I usually see more damage than this. Does the reinforced glass slow down our bullet? We're even getting good hits and we're not really. Grab our zombie, ignore. Just uh, go ahead and let this get up there. How are you not dead, my man? Oh my god. Okay, kill him. Great. Uh, and the reason we killed him is just because on the off chance that he can get to us uh, through here. Oh, we're stunned as well. If we look, we're currently dazed. Visibly shaken, you're having a hard time focusing on what's going on around you. That is a proc from the Shrieker zombie. Um, when you're nearby and they screech, it gives you the dazed effect. It's not super relevant. The speed negative can be pretty impactful depending on where you are. Dexterity and perception are not great things to lose when you're trying to shoot an enemy, but it's not um, it's not going to destroy you or get you killed or anything. Anyway, just uh, loot in here. Unfortunately, no scientist zombie this time. Check the desks, I guess. Oh, quite a lot of stuff. Discobolus, no thank you. We'll take the disposable battery since we're almost down and out of the one we have currently. My goodness, that wind outside is quite intense today. Where's my 73 charge left? Um, also a radio with a disposable, we'll take that too, I guess. Drops them on the ground, I really hate that it's doing that. Used to put them in your inventory, lately it's been dropping them on the ground. Check again on the off chance there's a CBM in here, there isn't. 
So largely disappointing. Interesting that it's another open variant though, um, because we didn't have to crack in there. Oh, I'm still carrying that jackhammer as well. That's gonna be problematic as we continue exploring. Where do we wanna head? So basically, since this is um, the prisoner containment, we know this is a dead end. No doors to the right, no doors to the right, no doors to the right, another dead end. So this whole section of the lab is done now. Um, again, very confident there's a turret in this room. And there's also lights at every exterior, at every door. Actually, we might be able to go kill a turret over there. Let's uh, let's just play with this for a little bit, see where the light leads to. So let's crack this. So we should be in the dark here. Hostile detected. <sighs> it can see me. Very dark. Frustrating. This is frustrating. We're doing this again. I mean, there's kind of light there. It says very dark, though. Uh, let's save again, because it's been so wonky lately. Okay, can't see me. We're too far away to shoot it, really. Uh, so all this should be dark. We should be able to move all the way up to here. Okay. Still too far away, unfortunately. Not going to get good shot on him. Yeah, definitely. Um, You know, at this range, I would not necessarily encourage you to do this. If I were doing casual play, I might take shots at it like this if I really needed the ammo. Um, because it blind firing back, it's not going to hit us with every round. In fact, I'm going to illustrate that. We're not going to kill this turret. I'm just, I'm not going to save or anything. We're just going to call the episode right after this. But I want to illustrate that at this range, it's probably only going to hit you with one bullet, if even that. So we'll take a shot. You'll see it shot back. Seems like it only shot two shots. Um, but it's weird because it has all those ammo casings next to it. You hear pa-pow, 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 pa-pow. So it looks like four shots. Um, and we were hitting the right arm for nine damage. So you'll see that... At this range, they're not going to hit you with every bullet. So if you can guarantee that you can kind of hit it, um, you can kill it this way. Um, I would not encourage you to do this because of the danger associated. You can still take a bullet to the head. Um, here we took two more from to the right arm and for significant amounts of damage. Um, and we actually missed our shot. So yeah, I would not recommend you do this, but this is something you can potentially do if you're desperate for ammunition and uh, you want a chance at you know maybe being able to kill something and getting that, that access to all that ammo. Um, so we'll, we'll continue doing this until we die or we kill it just to show. Yeah. So there we got it eventually. Not again, not optimal, but definitely something you can do. And again, I'm not going to save this. We didn't need to kill that turret. I was just trying to illustrate something. So, um, yeah, I think we'll call the episode there. So for now, stupid shift key, uh, for now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. Hopefully you learned something, and uh, I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future, and I'll see you in the next episode.